So in problem eight, we're asked to find the distance from three, seven, negative five, two, and then there's all of these options. So part A says the distance from three, seven, negative five to the x, y plane. Now, the important thing about talking about the x, y plane um, so let's draw a picture here because although we can do this using the formula, the truth is I think all of these problems might be easier with a picture. Um, now, unfortunately, it's going to be a little messy because of that negative five. So you're just going to have to bear with me on being down here below the axis. But if I wanted to plot that point, I'd come out three, so one, two, three, and then I need to take seven steps to the right. Oh, I wrote a Z, I'm at a seven. That's a seven. So if I were, Kind of make myself a little dashed line back to here that would hit seven on the y-axis and then I need to go down five so one two three four five so I am now at the point three seven negative five so the xy plane that means this flat plate here, because if that's Z, that's X, and that's Y, then the XY plane is secretly where Z equals zero. It's kind of this flat sheet right here. So if I want to know the distance from this point up to Z equals zero, well, I know that's a distance of five. I don't actually need to use the formula to know that because this point is five steps below z equals zero or below the xy plane. So that distance is five. B is asking for the distance to the yz plane. And I'm gonna think about this in exactly the same way. So that yz plane, that's what lives back here in the board. So if I'm standing at this point, then the distance to the YZ plane is how far we've walked forward. Well, we walked forward three steps to get there. So that means my distance to the YZ plane is three. Um, then we've got C is the distance to, you could probably guess this, the XZ plane. And the XZ plane, that's the one that lives over here with the X and Z axes. So the distance to the XZ plane is how far we walked here along the Y axis. Well, we walked out this way seven steps. So that distance is seven. Now part D says the distance to the X axis. Now we might actually have to do something. So I'm standing here and I'm trying to figure out the distance to get over here to the x axis. Well what I know when I'm at the x axis um, is, see this is where my ability to graph things is not wonderful, but to get over here, to get back to the x-axis, I know I'm going to have to come up five and over seven because I'm currently five below that xy plane and I'm seven pushed out this way. 
So I know that if I were to make a big triangle here, this side would be a five and this side would be a seven. And that distance would be looking like the square root of seven squared plus five squared. And we're gonna do something similar for each of the other axes. So E was asking us the distance to the y-axis. So my picture is about to get messy, but if I'm standing at that point and I need to get back to the y-axis, well, I have this triangle where that side is five again, and this side is three, and it's kind of, I'll try to draw this in 3D, but this triangle, it's still a right triangle with one side of five and one side of three, which means that distance is a square root of five squared plus three squared. Um, and for F, the distance to the Z axis, if I'm standing here, and I have to get back to that corner. I, because I've got to get back to the z-axis, I know that I've got to walk back my three in the x direction and my seven in the y direction. So that distance would look like three squared plus oops, seven squared. <laughs> 